Where are you from? How are you? No, the, the speech recognition is just not, not doing super great. Oh, I feel like a cat. Good morning. So Pepe is a, a robot. It's a social robot. And we say it's a social robot because it has different sort of like social attributes to it. You can see it has eyes that blink. It has a smile, so kind of a facial expression going on. It can gesture and it can point to things. Then it can have dialogue with people. So it has lots of different things that make it social because it uh, uses social rules that people use in interaction among themselves. So my name is Ilaria. I am an assistant professor here at Chalmers University of Technology. And I work in this field called social robotics. So it's basically uh, trying to figure out how people interact with social robots such as Pepper and making sure that the robots also behave in an appropriate way, in a socially acceptable way in different contexts. And the idea is to make robots that can help people in different parts of their lives to make their lives easier. I'm actually a linguist by background, so I trained in uh, linguistics and then phonetics. And I really wanted to move into something more practical that could like I don't know, do something useful. And then from there, I went to do a PhD in a project on sort of like creating voices for robots, so kind of like uh, artificial voices uh, specifically for robots. And I was immediately hooked because it has a body, it can in interact with the world around it, it can move around, it can, you know, sense things, you can really, it's sort of like physically embodied in the world. It's really, it has its own kind of social presence. So, um, hello. <laughs> hello. These kind of social robots can also be used, for example, in the home for like assisting the elderly um, in, in independent living, also assisting for like children with maybe learning disabilities or like learning difficulties. It can be used as a guide in a museum, for example. It can be used as a receptionist in a hotel. And also what's particularly important for us in research is that we have a lot of sort of like data out there on how people interact with this robot in particular because there, is, there are so many studies that have used Pepper. My personal line of research with these social robots is um, I want to go into making some small improvements in society in different ways. So for example, I have my student, Marti, who is going to continue on this work of using robots to fight gender stereotypes in society. Because you see, for example, this robot, from its voice, lots of people think it's a female, other people think it's a man from the name. It doesn't really matter, the point is that Whatever, we as humans are like primed to see gender in things. We're really primed to put things into categories that we are used to. And gender is one of these categories. And the problem is that when we, uh, when we associate an object, for example, Pepper with a gender category, then we also associate it with the corresponding implicit gender stereotypes that we might have. And so what I want to do is try to figure out if by changing some parameters on the robot, we can decrease the stereotypes that people will have for the robot and then eventually for society as well. Something else I would like to work on is, for example, improving adolescents' mental health with a robot such as Pepper. So having some kind of like a home companion that you can use uh, whenever you're feeling down for whatever reason, but you still don't want to call your parents or your guardians. Maybe a robot can be sort of an intermediary between you and some other friends or some other community, for example. So these are like small improvements that we can do sort of at the local level that can hopefully, you know, contribute to like a smaller, small but better society. Good morning.